Hello, I'm so glad that you are joining us today. And today's lesson is going to be about standard 1.1b, and it covers the topics on how to solve liter literal equations. Um, if you're working in Study Island, it's the lesson that is titled Rewrite Functions. So once you go through this lesson, you are welcome to go there and try, try the questions in Rewrite Functions. Now remember, as you are watching this video, you can pause, stop, rewind as much as you need to. I highly recommend that you take notes. And you can even pause before I do a question, work it out as far as you can, and then resume the video and see how you did. And when we go to solve literal equations today, we are going to be using our equation solving skills. And these are the equations that have numerous variables in them. So there's going to be a bunch of letters, which can seem kind of scary, but don't worry you can do it we and I will be breaking it down for you you may be wondering when you would actually use this well one common example is if you ever need to use an exchange rate so if you go t um, to another country on a vacation you will want to know what something costs in their money in American dollars and vice versa. So when you go there, they give you an exchange rate and you're gonna to wanna to be able to go from American money to the foreign country's money and back again so that you can make wise decisions while you're purchasing. And so this is one way that you can use the skill that we are talking about today. Given the following formula, solve for R. Assume R is a positive real number. All right, so we want to get this variable r completely by itself. So that means I need to strip away the pi and the squared and the h. So I need to start thinking about how can I undo those things. Well, the pi is being multiplied, the square is squaring, and the h is being multiplied. I don't... So in general, you work backwards and order of operations. There's always an exception to every rule, but in general you work backwards. So I don't have any addition or subtraction, so I'm going to look, do multiplication and division next. I just have multiplication in this problem, so I have pi being multiplied and the h being multiplied. So to undo those, I'm going to divide. And you can do each one separately, or you can divide them both at the same time. Either way is correct. So since I divided the second side by pi and h, I need to do the same to the first side to keep everything even and balanced. On the second side, these pi's cancel and these h's cancel, so I'm left with just the r squared. So I'm going to have v divided by pi h equals just the r squared. So I almost have r completely by itself. Now I'm going to go ahead and take the square root of both sides. And the reason for that is I have the square to move. The opposite of squaring is the square root. Just like adding and subtracting and multiplying and dividing are opposites. Squaring and square root. So I'm going to take the square root of r squared to cancel out the square but since I did that to the second side, I'm going to have to take the entire right side square root also. And so that's going to leave me on the second side with completely just r, which is what I'm looking for. And then I'm just underneath my square root, I'm going to have v over pi h. And that is my answer because r is completely by itself, so that's letter c. Here's my next problem. Given the following formula, solve for h. Area equals one half times the quantity the first base plus the second base times h, or height. So I want to get that h completely by itself. 
So I'm going to need to strip away the one half and the parentheses of B1 plus B2. So when I am, I have this addition that's in the parentheses, so I can't just start subtracting those. It's locked in that parentheses jail. I can't take the B1 without taking the B2. So the first thing I'm going to do is deal with that one half. So anytime I want to get rid of a one half is I could divide both sides by one half and that is correct. However, I find it easier to move and remove fractions by multiplying by the reciprocal. Reciprocal just means flip the fraction. So instead of having 1 over 2, I'm going to multiply both sides by 2 over 1. And what that does is here, 1 half of 2 is 1. Well, 1 times anything is itself, so that just re disappears. So the 1 half and the 2 over 1 cancel each other out. Now remember, you can stick a 1 underneath here. 2 times a is 2a, and 1 times 1 is 1. 1 in a denominator is not necessarily, though, so I'm not going to write that there because it's assumed. And so the now that's going to be equal, parenthesis b1 plus b2 and parenthesis h. Now, since these b's are still locked in parenthesis jail, I can't just, I need to move them all together. Well, this whole parenthesis is being multiplied by h. So I can go ahead and divide both sides by that entire parenthesis to undo that multiplication. And so these cancel all at once because, and I can do that because the entire parenthesis is being multiplied and so I can cancel the entire thing at once. So then on the far side, I'm left with H, which is what I want, so it's exciting. And then on the beginning there, I have 2A over B1 plus B2. And the parentheses here aren't needed because there's nothing in front of or behind the parentheses. So you can drop them. It's not incorrect to write them. It's just more than we need. So that's why in our answer of letter C, we don't see the parentheses. This type of problem here is a very common one in EOI practice. So it says, given the following formula, solve for L. So we have perimeter equals 2 times the length plus 2 times the width. And we want to get that L completely by itself. So here, and remember I said, in general, you undo order of operations. There's an exception to every rule, but in general. So at the end of order of operations is adding and subtracting. Here, well, that's what we're going to want to do first because we're undoing. So here, anything, I have this plus 2w that doesn't have an L in it. So that's what I'm going to try to strip away first. So I have addition that I want to undo. The opposite of adding is subtracting. So I'm going to subtract 2w from both sides. Okay, these two W's here are going to cancel, and that's going to leave me with P minus 2W on the f left side of the equation. And I'm just going to go ahead and write that on a single line instead of up and down. And that's going to equal the 2L. I script my L so they don't look like 1's, so that is a script L. Now, I almost have this L by itself, but I still have this 2. This is 2 times L. The opposite of multiplying is dividing. So I'm going to divide both sides by 2. 
Okay, so these twos cancel out to one, and so I'm left with just L on the right side of the equation. Now I'm left with P minus 2W over 2. Now this is an incorrect, um, but you see that doesn't look like any of my answers, so they must want me to simplify further. Now, what a common mistake is, and that lots of students make, is they're like, oh, well, there's a 2 on the top and there's a 2 on the bottom. I can cancel that. You can't do that because of this subtraction. In order to do that, you'd have to be able to cancel a 2 from the P also. So you, that is a common, common mistake. Don't do it. It'll make me cry inside. Um, you, if you're going to do that, you have to be able to do it from every piece. And I have one, two, three pieces here, and only two of them have the two. So you have to do it from every piece. But what I can do is I can split that fraction up and put the two separately. Let's do that in blue. And do the two separately under each piece. You can do that. That's a rule you're allowed to do with fractions. And then I can cancel these twos because I'm still keeping the two underneath the P over here. And they're now separate fractions. So this fraction only has two pieces and each piece has a two. So that I, that's why the rule, it's okay to do it in this instance. So then I'm just left with P over two minus W equals L, which is letter A. In this problem, I want to get the t squared completely by itself. There are a couple ways that you could do this, but when I look at this problem, I see that it's a proportion, that it's a fraction equal to a fraction. So anytime I'm work solving a proportion, that's when you cross multiply. And I'm going to do that also in this case. I'm going to go ahead and cross multiply. And the reason for that is because it's going to get rid of those fractions and get everything on one line like we're used to seeing. So I'm going to take, first I'll take P1 times T2. So that's going to be P1 times T2. And then I'll cross multiply the other way and get T1 times P2 on the other side. So just remember, I'm trying to get t2 completely by itself. I have this p1 being multiplied by it. That's what I need to remove to get it completely by itself. So to undo division, or sorry, to undo multiplication, I do division. So I'm going to divide both sides by p1. Right, these cancel, and I'm left with T2 equals T1 times P2 on the numerator and then divided by P1 in the denominator. Now, I could cancel these P1s because they were exactly the same. They had the same subscript. I can't cancel these P's because they have different subscripts. So T2 is completely by itself, so this is my answer, which is letter D. In this problem, they give us the sloped intercept form of a line, and they want us to solve it for X. So we want to get X completely by itself. So we always want to see if we can strip away addition and subtraction first. So here I have this plus B that I need to remove first. So I'm going to subtract B from each side. So Y minus B, you can't simplify that anymore, so I'm just writing it on one line. Here, the B minus B cancel, and I'm just left with MX. Now, I need to get x by itself. It had times m currently. So to undo that multiplication, I'm going to divide both sides by m. Here, these m's cancel. 
my left side, there's nothing in common there. So I can't simplify it anymore. So I'm just going to have y minus b over m equals x, which is letter D.